Hello everyone, this is episode 7 of Here Comes the Pitch, a podcast about pitching story ideas. I'm your host, Dirk Heron, and in today's episode, I will be pitching a suspense thriller called A Part of Me to my guest, Jason Bianco Starnes. I would compare this story to the movies regarding Henry and Misery. Well, without further ado, here comes the pitch. I, we had talked beforehand um, about like the show, and I had pitched you like this sci-fi story, and um, so I kind of wanted to stay in that same vein. Sure. Like I'm gonna pitch you another um, sci-fi esque story um, that um, it's something that I've actually been developing for a couple years, um, slowly but surely putting um, more pieces together. I kind of knew how. There's a twist at some point in the story, but like, uh, uh, I never really knew how it would end, and I still don't. Like, I, I just I know the characters. Um, it's it was kind of like this um, kind of a practice on trying to develop a story that only takes place in a, a limited amount of rooms. So this was also like an idea that I had where. Um, it would be an interesting short story or short film, or it could even be a feature film if it wanted to be, or, you know, like a comic book. Um, Is that what you mean by a limited amount of rooms? Yeah, just just so that, like, it, it could be cheaply made. Yeah. Um, you know, but also still have, like, this really cool sci-fi element, almost like it, it you know, it takes place in, like, this dy- dystopian landscape, kind of like... Uh, you know, Blade Runner esque. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so it all starts out <clears throat> with this young lady. She's probably like you know, eighteen or so, and she wakes up and she's like kind of in this like um, hospital room that's like in disarray. It, you know, just like it's it's gross in there. You know, uh, but she can barely see. She can barely move, uh, and. And all she can do is cry. And this doctor comes in and, you know, tells her that she was in this horrible accident and that everything will be fine and that she'll, he'll take care of her. And um, so he works with her to rehabilitate her to, like, speak and to walk again. And um, do you remember that movie regarding Henry? I love that movie. Harrison Ford. I love that so movie. So that's kind of how I felt like it would be like where, yeah. you know, here's this, here's this but person. But she's starting to come to. Yeah. Or, or not well, mentally, it, but physically. But like, well, the, the thing is physically, yeah. you know, ha- having to <clears throat> relearn everything. Um, and so at, at one point, you know, she, she has to like ask the question like, so what happened, you know? Mm-hmm. What happened to me? And so he goes on to tell her about like how her family and her were were basically gunned down in the streets um, because there's ongoing war that's taking place outside of the hospital. Um, it's, you know, this, everybody is like, you know, robbing everyone, looking for any kind of food or... Uh, anything that they can uh, mm-hmm. gather. And so they were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, she was shot in the back. She, she has a scar. And uh, it, it pierced one of her kidneys, and she lost a kidney. That's why she's kind of sickly. Uh, but, but still fine, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when... Not dead. Not dead. <laughs> not dead. You know, she's alive. Yeah. But... She she suffered a head injury that put uh, her in a coma because, like, you know, her, her family and her were left for dead. And when they finally found her, you know, she was uh, – the concussion was so bad that, you know, it put her in this coma. And when she finally came to after a long period of time, yeah, she was basically – her mind was put back to, like, an infant's 
mind, you know? Yeah. And so I've got a quick question. Yeah, sure. Is it, is it okay if I interrupt you? Yeah, no, okay? go ahead. That's, that's So before she's in the hospital, does she, like, I mean, before she has to re- rehabilitate her, her mind. Yeah. What, was she conscious of the chaos war prior to her family being attacked or did it like happen at that same time? Um, I think that they knew, like they knew the risks that they like, were part of it is what I'm saying. Like, what uh, I'm maybe, asking. you know, like that, that, that was the thing is that, uh, um, he kind of gives her a limited amount of information about like what took place. Um, all that he has to say is that you know she was she was gunned down, her family were gunned down, <clears throat> uh, she survived, mm-hmm. and um, basically like you know you're lucky to be alive, you know. And then her next question would be like, all right, well, why can't I leave this room? Because that's 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 the next problem. That's the next thing that she's she's wondering, and he tries to tell her. That, that you know, like, it's not it's not safe outside. Um, you don't you don't want to deal with the world. Um, it's this is probably the safest place that you can be. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I don't know. Did, did you ever see the uh, Cloverfield Lane movie? No, I didn't. Where it's kind of like like. Um, with John Goodman, where oh, it's yeah. like, kind yeah, of like yeah. a bomb shelter yeah. uh, situation. Yeah. So it's it kind of feels like that. Isn't he kind of faking it? Um, in that or movie? you don't know that until the end, right? Yeah, like she starts to kind of put it together. Right. But the thing is, is that, you know, he's right. You know, the world is fucked. And so that, um, you know, it... She, He's probably right that this is the safest place to be, um, and and that sh- he's like really the only doctor in there. He's like trying to take uh, take care of these patients um, in 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 this situation that they're in, and um, the best that he can. So I'm, 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 I'm assuming that this is like a fortified hospital at this point. Yeah, yeah. Like it's you know he's <laughs> this is his home. Yeah. You know, yeah, um, and so she she deals with it. You know, she at at some point she she does her best uh, um, to just understand that this is her home. Uh, you know, like she cleans her room. She you know she's um, she reads a lot. She she learns of what the world used to look like. You, you know, she ends up painting the walls. With like uh, you know these nice landscapes and clouds and trees and stuff like that, what what she hoped the world would be like, mm-hmm. um, and then you know the doctor is kind of like her best friend, you know, like she, that's the only person that she he knows, and at one point he tries to take it to the next level, and uh, and it's it's just weird to her, you know, she almost looks at him. Uh, like a father figure he's he's much older but he still looks nice it it's almost to the point where his he it seems like he has like a much older body but like maybe like kind of like facial um reconstruction or like just uh plastic surgery to mm-hmm. the point where you know um maybe because you know he's a doctor he was able to get that done, you know? So he tries to look younger than he really is. That's what I'm trying to get across. And, um, so he, you know, he's upset that sh- she doesn't want to take their relationship to the next level, but he understands. And he actually offers her to, to meet one of the other patients. And so, you know, she's, she's very happy to like actually meet someone else. But when she, she enters the other room uh, and she finds out that like this person that's in there was like badly burned almost to the point of like, just like, he just looks mutilated. And, um, and he thinks that she would be scared by like, uh, by this, you know, person. Yeah. Uh, but she's not like, she takes pity on him. You know, the, 
this is horrible. This is what the world has done this to him. And, and so she offers to help the doctor with like, you know, cleaning his bandages, mm -hmm. you know, uh, taking care of him the best that she can. The guy can't even speak because that he's burnt so bad that it, it, it ruined his vocal cords. Um, and so she befriends this other patient. Um, it's, it's something that like she, she can finally like experience with the doctor that, wow, it is this bad. And, and, and then she really starts to like, understand that like, all right, well maybe we can do better here. Like maybe he, it's okay to like take our relationship to the next level. Maybe, you know, we can start a new family, yeah. you know, show someone else that there is better. And so she starts to kind of like fall in love with this guy. Um, but the doctor, not the patient, the doctor. Yeah. Um, but at some point she starts to like, um, venture around the hospital and she realizes that some doors are locked that uh she doesn't know why these doors are locked why why are you keeping secrets from me and then he's just like it's 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 better for you not to go into those rooms those are other patients those are people that are much further uh in disrepair than than that guy is and, mm -hmm. he, and she's just like well i can help you i can i can be um what i am for him and she, he, he just will not allow her to go in at some point he she gets a key card it leads her um to one specific room which is like kind of like his office she finds pictures and it's pictures of her with um, this other man that's like you know about her age, like when she was you well, know, like there it it's like she's a little bit younger, but she's with like a family, and like she's just like okay this this is my family. Why wouldn't he show me this picture? And then she confronts him about it. He gets very upset. Um, says like how dare you uh, get into my stuff. Uh, gets to the point where he's like physically like you know now i will not let you leave this room i will not let you f see your friend slash mm -hmm. patient um you know and so of course she's like upset about this but she also feels guilty in a sense but now now there's like more questions and he's not giving any answers and at one point she's she's just so lonely and and she starts to distance herself from him that like she just she wants to end her life like this is not a life that she wants to live uh she ends up trying to kill herself he stops her of course saves her and then says that like i'm not the one that's keeping you here and she's like oh well yes you are you know, you've locked me in this room. You won't let me out. You won't let me do anything. Um, but he's like, there's somebody else that's in control of this situation. And, I, you know, I will bring that person to you. And, and you can confront that person. You can say, why can't I live my life the way I want to? Mm -hmm. This is, it's not my fault. <clears throat> so... She, he ends up bringing this person and like there's like a bag over her head uh, um, over the person's head and and you're just like wondering what is who is this person and what's under the bag what's under the bag and when she when he lifts the bag he, she sees herself but much older and it's like what is this all about and she finally speaks this older version of herself and says like like how dare you kidnap me how dare you put me in this situation like you know 
she was never supposed to wake up. Um, you know, I'm sick of you doing this. Like this is, I know that you've been doing this for a while. Um, you're sick. This is, this is older version saying this to the doctor. Saying this to the doctor. In front of the younger version? Yeah. Okay. And like, you know, this is like blowing her mind. Like, well, what is going on? Yeah. And, and you find out that this doctor is actually the younger brother of this older version of herself. And that she was only meant to be kind of like an organ farm in a sense. Like she was a clone of, of this older version and that she was just using, uh, her, her younger to self kind of like lengthen their lives to lengthen, lengthen their lives. And <clears throat> we come to find out that, uh, you know, this was like illegal, uh, at some point, but they continued doing it. They hid these bodies um, because what you end up finding out is that the, the burnt, um, um, patient is actually not burnt. He was just, his skin was peeled off and he applied it to himself because that was a younger version of himself as well. And so crazy. <laughs> and so. But somehow that guy is still alive, that version. Yes, of him. but that's the reason. Well, well, he has to keep him alive because those he has organs that he could possibly use later down yeah, the road. Yeah, yeah, and, so and basically, so, she befriended a skinless, yeah, version of the doctor, which is technically her brother. Yes, God, <laughs> pretty nuts so far. Yeah. So, and you know, at some point, like that's where I don't know where to go with the story we, we've gotten to the twist there's there's there was different versions that i was thinking of with the ending um you know she's got to escape somehow she's got to get away from this nut job mm -hmm. um <clears throat> i thought you know maybe the the skinless um clone you know ends up sacrificing his own life to like kind of save her um the younger version um the the older version of herself and the younger version end up you know escaping um all three of them escaping the doctor well the skinless clone yeah, ends but, up yeah, dying yeah, yeah, got it. to so that they can escape yeah, yeah yeah um but and then i thought like it would be interesting like that like maybe the it, he's like severely wounded the doctor but like he ends up crawling into another room and like he like makes his way up to like the bed and he, and then he says like something, I don't know, kind of corny or it doesn't say anything, but it's like, you know, if you don't, ex at first you don't succeed, try again. And it's like a, another version of mm -hmm. his, of his sister younger. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like that was like the next round of, uh, you know, organs to keep. And so I thought that would be it's kind, of, kind of a get out vibe to it. Well, a little bit, yeah. yeah like not, it, not, not, it's yeah, totally. it's not like where where they're psychically transferring their uh, their minds yeah. into a, like a uh, like an, another person, but it's 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 just like I thought that th this makes more sense that it's like we already are able to like clone animals, you know. It's it's uh, it's against uh, the law to even try to clone humans right mm -hmm. now. Um, it might be going on in other countries. We don't know. Um, but, and that might be a secret that they've been holding back from us. And we don't know uh, yeah. what's going on, but, um, but it, it's a way of, of keeping you alive. It's, it, you know, to have like a perfect, uh, donor, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing would go wrong. Nothing would go wrong. You yeah. could, you could live for a, I don't know, who knows how long you could live. Well, I mean, they're technically kind of doing that. I mean, they're, there's guys, there's like doctors in Brazil and stuff that are cloning, like, they take your own DNA and they'll clone you another heart. They grow you. Yeah, there's, I mean, it's uh, not the same thing, but it's. Yeah, it's it's getting to that point. Like, I know that they, no they've already, uh, they, they're already starting to like, uh, like grow body parts on, um, like rats and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I've seen where they've, 
grown ears and stuff that like people could use noses yeah that's it's weird man hey but it's future it's the future and that's why i thought that it, this would be like a really interesting like it like what if you know cloning got this bad like what if um but in a sense she was never supposed to wake up she was never supposed to have a life yeah she was just supposed to be harvested yeah so um so so i gotta ask you is there like some kind of divine reason why she wakes up or is it just she just wakes up because she's well, not supposed to wake up. I thought that like they go through th this measures. doctor is this like kind of like sick sadistic dude who had a crush on his 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 uh, sister, uh -huh. and uh, you know um, she, of course like maybe something did happen, but like it's to the point where you know that was we don't speak of that you know grow up. It happened when we were kids, you know, it was never going to go any further than what it was. Um, so, you know, and he just will not let that go. So that's why he's, he's like, <laughs> woke, he, he woke up this, this clone version of his sister so that like he, he could try and, uh, you know, have, enjoy, uh, or possibly have a relationship with it. Right. You know, with her. Yeah. Not it, but... Yeah. No, know, I... Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. So. I don't know, man. What do you think? I like it. I mean, I've got some questions. Shoot. Um, is this, like, set in the future? Yeah. This is set in the future. Like, how far are we talking? Well, it's it's enough to where, yeah, the world is, like, this, this dystopic... Yeah. Um... Mm -hmm. um you know, wasteland in a sense that like, yeah, it would not be safe to go outside. Yeah. That like maybe this, this hierarchy, you know, or, you know, like the rich are, are able to live long, you know, uh, because of the cloning, um, and, uh, harvesting of, of organs and stuff like that. And so, they can continue um, on on this planet mm -hmm. as long as is as, as long as their mind <laughs> yeah ends up uh, allowing them. <clears throat> right so. right um, also is it, like could there be a point where before she like actually does escape that she finds out that it's really not actually a hospital um well. It isn't a hospital. It's really just like this building where like a compound or something like a like a compound where yeah they just uh, where they keep clones so that they can be harvested for their um... so it, so is, is the doctor rich? Yeah, I would assume because okay. he he has a clone. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I I, I there was I kind of thought like maybe he's not as well off as his sister. Maybe that's one reason why he has to keep like this skinless. A younger version of himself alive because maybe that's his last clone mm -hmm. maybe maybe that's like uh, why he he's just like uh, when she uh offers to help him um take care of him that like at first he he doesn't really want her to but like hey this could help me in the long run because i gotta keep this guy alive yeah right you know because <clears throat> his, his injuries are so severe because mm -hmm. yeah i'm sure that Especially like with like these, you know, rooms not being very clean, um, that you know bacteria could uh, take over and, yeah. and kill him. <laughs> Skin his body. Yeah. <laughs> well, in certain places, you know, like yeah. this, but like that. That was one thing that I wanted to like. Well, maybe when uh, they take, you know, they end up having sex, like uh, taking their relationship to the next level. Um, you know, you kind of notice that his body is this kind of like, kind of old and kind of gross. But yeah. Like, and, but he has like this, you know, nice face. Little stuff. does she know she's having sex with her brother. <laughs> well, it's, it's you know, it's she's a clone. Yeah. But yeah. Well, if she's a clone by body, she's a clone by mind. Well, yeah. Well, I guess that's well, not really true. But just yeah, but just more that uh, 
their DNA yeah, is, right, 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 right. Is, right. is related so that, you know, they would, <clears throat> that it is considered inbreeding. Yeah. <laughs> so if they had a child, uh, you know, I know that you said that there's still a little bit more that you want to, you know, as far as like, how, you know, how you're going to write out the escape and all that kind of stuff. So another question I have is <clears throat> after the escape, is that literally just the end of the story? Uh, yeah, like I, I assume that, you know, they escape uh, and then you have that moment where he crawls up to another cloned version of his sister. Yeah. And and then it's just like, oh, geez. It's just you know why I like again. this? Because it could, it could be something that keeps going on. Yeah. Like a, like a second volume. I, I always thought it would be more standalone just because, think, like, oh, yeah. I, I, you know... It it shows that there's the possibility that he he could, could survive and that uh, you know he could do this all over again um, with a with another version of his sister, but I, I I would assume that she would call the authorities or something like that and mm-hmm. and get him imprisoned or something like that. I I don't know. So there is still somewhat of a government. Maybe I don't know. Uh, that that was just. I see because I'm seeing this kind of as a thriller, a little bit of a thriller. Oh yeah, it's definitely a thriller. Yeah, it's, uh, but you know, there's there's lots of hints of like <clears throat> other things in it. Like you know, I thought, like you know, when I said that regarding Henry, I could uh, I could see more like a kind of like a a misery vibe to it as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, also the Blade Runner um, scenario with like the dystopian world. I could think. It would be interesting, like where. Yeah, the, but that's pretty far in the future. Yeah, but we could almost like lower the tech to the point where it it looks uh, a lot like you know, like the old aliens movies and stuff like that. Where yeah, you know, maybe maybe uh, maybe there was like a maybe technology didn't evolve; it devolved in a sense. It's not as pretty looking as. As you know, like our phones are now, yeah, and how yeah. technology is now. Everything's clunky. Yeah, now everything's clunky. Yeah. You know, um, it, who knows? It's still futuristic. But it's, it's still futuristic, yeah. but like maybe they focused on like uh, making things a bit more uh, like you know stronger. You know, mm-hmm. to the point where you know it's not it's not pretty like it is now. I don't know. What? But like I, I just kind of like that version of like the the future. You know? I, yeah, no, I I know exactly what you mean. It's the it, it's the envisioned future that writers and people had like in the late sixties and seventies. Right, exactly. Like the Phil K. Dick stuff. Yeah, and, exactly. Um, and, and you know, then Spielberg at some point, you know, especially when he made like I Robot. Yeah, kind but, of figure out. Oh well, everything's coming a little bit sleeker, a little bit more. Yeah, but that's just how. But I agree with you. That's but you, your favorite version is my favorite version too. But uh, that's just how technology has evolved. It's, it's yeah. just it. You know, like it's prettier. It's it, like uh, everything runs well, so fast. It. You gotta yeah, you gotta make it look great. Mm-hmm. Everything's so visual now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but I thought like maybe at some point. Uh, the world went a different direction just because, like, maybe it, it's <laughs> so it kind of. Um, oh, what the hell? What the hell is that Peter Jackson movie with the with the prawns? Um, with Section the, Eight? No, no, no. Oh, you're thinking of uh, uh, District District Nine? District Nine? Kind of like that a little bit. Yeah, that was that was Peter Jackson didn't direct it, but he oh, that's right. It, okay, I yeah. So, uh, but yeah, maybe something like that. Did you ever see Chappie? I did see Chappie. Did you like Chappie? Not really. It was okay, but like it was definitely better than the uh, the uh, the Mad Damon Elysium or whatever. Oh man, that movie's terrible. <laughs> um, and that, I like Mad Damon. Yeah, but it's just a bad movie. I mean, I like the bodysuit thing or the exoskeleton thing. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't. That director was kind of blacklisted because, like, you know, you. Oh make, yeah. He well, you make two bad movies that cost a bunch of money. Like, it's gonna be difficult for you to make another movie in Hollywood. So, uh, who's that guy that touched kids? Uh, and he got ousted, but he made a pretty badass movie. Mm, there's a couple now. 
if you think about it. Uh, Brian Singer, you know, he, he there's a lot of controversy behind him. That dude that directed Powder. And, oh, that's what I was thinking yeah, of. And, um, you know, he did of. the Jeepers Creepers movies, too. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah. <clears throat> what I was trying to say was that that the director of District Nine, he's he's been doing all these like short films that are on YouTube now that like look really cool. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't watched any, but like, it's do you know remember what his name is? Not off the top of my head, but if you looked it up, yeah, you know, like it would take you right to like these short films that he's doing. I like what he's doing. Um, I've seen some of the trailers for him, but um, I personally really like that movie, that District Nine movie. Oh, District 9 was great. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, because if you remember, uh, that movie was supposed to be Halo. They were making a Halo what? movie. Yeah. And it just wasn't coming together huh. well. And um, and it, Peter Jackson was going to direct it. Um, they were uh, coming up with all this like new technology uh, to, to make it seem like these aliens are like kind of like in a, in a, like a worldly landscape just kind of like how district 9 is yeah um <clears throat> and then it just didn't pan out uh peter jackson was just like hey i'm gonna do other things this is not working out and so they ended up taking a lot of the pre-production and all, all the technology that they developed for that movie and then uh allowed district 9 to happen and and they made it it was kind of a low budget movie, in a sense. But so, did they bring in like another writer? Yeah, they they brought in like a new director, but like it, it, it was it was something that like a that was pitched, and they were just like, yeah, that works with what we've already developed huh. in pre production for Halo. Yeah, and let's let's go with it, let's run with it, and so yeah, and then that's so, what. I became, know that. Going back to your story, um, or your pitch. Uh, so like the rich, you know, there's obviously a distinguishment between poor people and chaos and the rich. Yeah. So are like, are they like barricaded themselves? Yeah. I, I would assume that this, this is, or maybe this is like a center for, uh, kind of like, like, like what I'm saying is like when you start to explain the atmosphere that the world is kind of in right now. Right. That, you know, like, or whoever, if this was ever made into a movie or a book. Yeah. You know, the kind of, you know, painting the picture, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, that it would, um, yeah, that it wouldn't, <laughs> the air probably wouldn't be breathable. Uh, it's some, something along that lines, because, but we're also kind of going by his word, you know. she He's painting the picture of what the world is like, um, so that she loses interest in, in wanting to go outside the to this world yeah um so we have to go by his word that's that that was one reason why um i i felt that this was kind of like a uh an exercise in writing um of of creating a story that where it's it, it takes place just in a one yeah year. it's like it's like a glenn gary glenn ross type kind of thing right yeah which i, I love that because it's like a play yeah it could be and, yeah. and that's how i would almost think of it is it like and that's what gives you weird good feelings yeah, and it was just a way of like, um, you know, dealing with a, a limited amount of characters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that we're 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 focused on just two main characters, and then sure, there's the uh, the 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 you know the younger version of himself uh, that she ends up dealing with at one point, um, and then the older version of herself that uh, when she when it's uh revealed that yeah she's just a clone and that she was and that that was another thing too was that like when she was shot in the back like how he's explaining that it was just that like one of her her kidneys were harvested she ended up using that kidney like that's why she has that scar and i thought like maybe at some point like uh you know she's starting to like the lose. older version of her well, use that kidney. Use that kidney. Got it, okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> I thought maybe, like, you know, maybe the doctor is trying to explain to her, like, oh, well, you know, from your injuries, you've, you've, uh, this shut down or something like that. So she's, she's losing more of herself along the way. Mm -hmm. And, and 
or maybe he's just kind of pulling those things out so that she's sicker, that she's more, uh, she has to, you know, well, you know, focus, you know, she has, she's a patient, you know, she, 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 she's at, at the point where she's so sickly. Yeah. She can't do anything about it. She can't, she can't do anything about it. Yeah. yeah. Like maybe he takes one of the other kidneys and now she's like on machines, like where she's like uh 24 <clears> seven <throat> dialysis, you know? Yeah. Um, so I don't know. This was like, like I said, this is just an idea. This is something that I've been playing around with. I thought maybe like, yeah, maybe when he captures the, the older version, uh, well, her, his sister, like maybe he's like, I'll, I'll take her kidney back. I'll, you know, I'll. What do you he, mean capture her? Well, he he kidnaps her so that like he he can show, uh, because the dude's fucking nuts. Uh huh. Like he he's trying to explain to her that I'm not the one that's holding you here. It, it's her. It's her. You're. She's. She wants you here yeah, so that she, she can you. harvest yeah. your organs. <clears throat> that's that's your purpose. He's like, but I think that you're more than that. You know, you can be more than that. We can have a life together. You know, he's trying to explain to her, like, um, that makes sense to him. Yeah. Well, what is going on? Um, that, but it, it's like kind of like a last resort. Like, yeah. You know, this, this, uh, younger version of his sister the clone is now killing herself she doesn't want to even live in this world anymore so he wants to like just lay it all out on the table you know this is what's going on yeah accept me yeah hopefully she'll take it yeah yeah right yeah, this is you can your life can be more than just this yeah yeah but you have to come with me yeah you know and so of course she's just like this guy's fucking nuts and like oh my god you know because in a sense that she is related to him you know? so so in the reality of the story you don't really ever see the outside no like as as a like maybe maybe that's just like when they exit the the building yes yeah. that's the end of the movie yeah um you know um, <clears throat> of course we go back to like seeing the doctor going into another room where there's there's another clone have you given any any thoughts or that's it's, it's not, um, you know, the chaotic world outside? We don't know. That they get that's outside and it's fucking birds singing and trees blowing in the I wind. thought that that would be great too, you know? Like maybe, maybe the world is fine. Maybe, maybe it's present day. Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Like, he's just a dude keeping his yeah. relatives and cloning people and... Yeah, he's, he's you know, and he's just fucking his his uh, yeah. his sister's clones. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and maybe maybe they're like this kind of like society that is allowed to do that, like that they've kept a secret that like they've that this technology is already um, you know available, and it's just like you just it has to be rich. Yeah, you just have to be rich. Yeah, and then like yeah, maybe they go out into the world and it, everything's fine. It's like it's actually like. Just present day, maybe, maybe it's it's more like maybe a couple of years have passed. Yeah, but, yeah, but it's uh, you not, know, but it's not. Like, yeah, and it's not like this very futuristic, dark world mm -hmm. that that he's like painted this picture, picture, yeah. um, you know, to her. So that's that's something. Yeah. So. So I mean. If if not if you know whatever well that's well no but, but I was gonna ask something else so would this I mean like in in your mind are you wanting it to be like this this could be like a whole entire movie yeah it's just almost, it doesn't I'm not saying it seems like a short story right but it it kind of has that well yeah like that that it, it's it's if if uh, I I assume it would be like a short film, you know, because mm -hmm. it's it's just like it would be difficult to to get it to an hour and a half if it was a film. Yeah, I I think that yeah, this is more of like a short story, uh, maybe like a shorter graphic novel, um, you know. But <clears throat> sounds maybe, like you make a great graphic novel for sure. Yeah, I think that's 
that's what I kind of want to do. Yeah. Um, I feel like I could um, use a lot of like reference um, photos. Like I, I almost thought like it would be really cool to like get some of my friends uh, together and then we could kind of like act it out and I could just take pictures. Kind of like you did with me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when, or exactly well, like what he did. Yeah, but but and it would be <clears throat> it would it'd be kind of simplistic where it's all taking place in just one room, and uh, you know, um, and it's basically three characters mm-hmm. because you know the older version would uh, of of the clone uh, the sister would would just be that person again, <laughs> but I would just have to make them look older. Yeah, right, right, know? right. So right, but. But yeah, it does sound easier said than done. Yeah, like once or maybe again, not. Well, no. Like once again, that was just yeah. Uh, I, this is this was like a uh, an exercise in, in in kind of developing, like almost kind of like a play in a sense mm-hmm. where yeah, it all takes place. Just but I, I totally agree. I mean, like writing that way definitely like strengthens your, you know, the skill of writing. Right. Because, like, you know, not allowing, um, you know, locations and stuff like that to help still tell a story. Exactly. That, that we are just focused mainly on these two people mm-hmm. um, and, 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 and dealing with the, the questions that, uh, that they have for each other and, 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 and where this relationship and how it develops yeah. goes. Yeah. Yeah, because so. like I always say, I always say Jaws. Yeah. It's not about the shark. It's about the three guys. It's about the three guys on the boat. Right. Singing and sharing their war stories and being afraid together and being happy together. And, and then also their motivations behind the shark. You yeah. Know, one's the scientist, one's the sheriff. One's the hunter. And one's the hunter. Yeah. You know? And, yep. And each one has a different... Uh, reason why they're after the shark exactly so so it's it's just a personal story yeah definitely and and it's just how they relate to it and did i show you my copy yes you did oh that's right okay yeah so uh yeah what he's talking about is that uh he has a like a first print of uh the, the novel. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I guess it's just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So sometimes... You got, you that's why... About I, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you're this comfortable. To yeah, where, yeah. Like, we've pretty much forgotten that we're doing a podcast. Well, yeah, but there there are, there are rules of podcasts. I mean, you yeah. can't really just leave them hanging. And just... <laughs> yeah, you remember that, right? Cool. Sweet. <laughs> well, man, I think that's where we should probably end it. Well, uh, I dig it, man. Oh, thanks, man. I dig it. It's I, a good story. It's, it's something, yeah, like I started developing like a couple years ago and uh, I just keep adding to it yeah. and um, once again I like don't really know <laughs> how to end it but You'll I, I think it out. but but once again like it just helps to talk it out yeah and you're then, almost there yeah and uh, I think that one thing too that you start to realize um, um, when writing is that um, especially when you get that far mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. the, the characters will let you know how it ends you know like yeah. you'll, you'll 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 get to a point well that's what uh you know writers have told, <laughs> said in interviews and stuff like that that um it's better not to have an ending like when going into something because um yeah who i know with that who agree knows with that. where it, it <clears throat> would go you know Especially i mean you when, know having an outline is one thing but right having a definitive ending before you've even right. written the story right it's kind of odd yeah, Stephen King talks about it that he's he's talked to other uh, writers and sometimes that that the first thing that uh, he talked about this one specific writer I don't know I don't remember his name but he said that uh, the writer uh, writes the last sentence of of his novel first, huh? And that's and then that and then he begins his novel and he's just like and Stephen King just. Is like kind of blown away by that. Like, I don't know how you can come up with the ending. It's like eating your dessert before you have your meal. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's how he goes uh, into writing. Like, um, is that uh, well, the last line doesn't necessarily mean the the ending. The ending. Yeah, but <clears throat> it, but it, it's the the resolution. The, well, it's it, it's a hint at the resolution of of it all. Yeah. Um. So, um, but. So we'll, I'll see. Like you know, yeah. I just 
like once again, uh, this is this podcast is is a motivator to to get things started. Yeah, it's 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 a way of getting out the idea, and 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 whether Give or not traction. Yeah, I get an attraction, get some feedback, mm-hmm. and, and 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 see where it goes from there. Let's take it to the next level. Yeah, um, whether it being written into a short story, developed into a graphic novel, a screenplay, a novel. Mm-hmm. You know, who knows? Yeah, so. I mean, I dig the one room aspect of it, and I dig the two character aspect of it. I yeah. think those are both pretty. I mean that. I mean that. I mean that'll make a good story. Thanks, man. Everything that's like that. So I, I thought th- this is the title, too. A Part of Me. That's really good. So That's really good. <laughs> I like that because it makes sense. Yeah. And it's and, kind of eerie at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Kind of has like that horror movie yeah. aspect to it, but not... Really. But, it, but it also thriller, too. Yeah. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. that the, the, there is a secret behind it all. Yeah. And um, and I, I would assume that the, the, the audience... Or reader would uh, assume that right off the bat, you know, right? Like something's going on, right. something's fishy, right? So, um, but well, thanks, man. Yeah, I, of I really uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, and I, I enjoy like your, your feedback every time I've shared a story with you, and uh, I hope to have you on the show again. I hope to be on again at some point, and for sure. uh, and uh, share another kooky idea yeah well i'd like to come on here and maybe throw you one well that's going to be the next episode is that you're going to oh, come on oh and uh you're going to pitch to me all right so i'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say well great minds think alike so yeah maybe you know you could pitch <clears throat> me a sci-fi or you could pitch me something like more of a thriller what if or... i just wrote this or just <laughs> change like Minor little things and just pitch that to you. So it starts out with this girl. It's in the old up. west, <laughs> and it's in a old west hospital. This girl wakes up. Yeah, man. And you're just sitting there with your mouth like, open. Like serious? Yeah. Just fucking doing this? Yeah. But no. But cool, man. I I, I look forward to um, hearing your pitch. For sure. So. For sure. Well, this right. is the end of uh, Here Comes the Pitch, episode number seven. Just get some doors. This is the end going. <laughs> Thank well, you. Yeah. Appreciate it, buddy. Th- th- thanks, for, uh, thanks for listening, and uh, thanks again. Yeah. On the show. No problem. Anytime. All right. All right.